Hello everybody, let's talk about Dynamics 365 event management and specifically the capability to create a public event website. In Dynamics 365 marketing, you have the possibility to manage events and register attendees from sort of backend system, but you can also publish an event website and allow end user to create their own profile, register for an event and for sessions. And now let's go into one of my probably favorite aspects of the, the event management capability in Dynamics 365, which is the possibility to generate event website. So event website are portals that are automatically generated uh, for managing, for capturing uh, registration in a self-service way, so that you don't have to register people, but people can register themselves, and also obviously to promote the event. So the event website provides uh, different online resources, starting from a list of all the events that people can read about the event, that are available, so if you promote multiple events, and then a specific, when you open an event, you get information about the specific event, all the speakers, the session, the possibility to register, and even to manage your own profile, because if you disable the anonymous registration, you need to authenticate in the system, so you have to build your own profile, this will create uh, a contact, and uh, if the integration with sales is enabled, then uh, you have also a lead generation. Now, until uh, a few months ago, I believe, uh, one, you will have uh, three options to create uh, an event website which was uh, to use uh, Dynamics 365 native portal capability. Now, this now is discontinued. It's no longer available. So the preferred way of having an event website is to have an Angular application. If you don't know what is an Angular application, it's a, a JavaScript framework that is used for a building website. So Microsoft adopts this uh, Angular framework because it will make it easy to customize the layout of the website. And you can choose whether you want to host this Angular event site in Dynamics 365 or in your own hosted environment. So no longer native portals, so only Angular sites are available, but you can choose whether you want to host this Angular site on Dynamics 365 portal, so in the cloud, and then you get an event URL which is generated by the system itself, you don't have control on that URL. Or if you have, if you want to have, a, if you want to personalize that URL, then you have to host the Angular site. And, but this Angular site is all generated by the application itself. So you just have to download the package and install it in your own hosted environment, which can be on a, App service in Azure or, the, or any other cloud. Uh, one note also about uh, uh, privacy here. Um, and this is mainly related uh, if you are publishing an event uh, uh, for participants in Europe uh, where GDPR is uh, you know, a significant uh, impact on collecting personal information. The event management tool, the event, man, the event site that is published from event management doesn't, does not include 
an out of the box cookie consent feature. So this is something that you have to build. So you have to introduce uh, the disclaimer to say this event site uh, use cookies uh, for collecting this information and uh, cookies are only used or information is only used for these purposes, uh, whatever terminology you want to use. So again, this is something that you need to introduce in the system. Uh, be aware that Dynamics 365 event management use cookies for different purposes. Uh, the marketing pages use cookies to prefill contacts that are already known, that already exist, and the event website use the cookies to log visit, so to keep track of who has access to these web pages. And there are four different types of cookies that are used in event management. The long-term behavioral analysis cookie is a cookie that is set and read on any web page where you have placed a behavioral analysis script. So this enables uh, the, the Dynamics 365 marketing to score leads based on their level of interaction with a given website. Then you have a short term or single visit cookie, which is again on the web page, is again uh, driven by the behavioral analysis script, but it expires after 30 minutes. Uh, I believe you can change that, but the out of the box, the, the, the default configuration is 30 minutes. And it, this, is cook, this cookie is used to group all page loads by a given visitor that are recorded by the same behavioral, uh, the same behavior. And, um, and it's in a, in, a, you know, in a limited time frame. So it's just a way to say, okay, what is this person doing in this session? Then you have a marketing page cookie. And this is just done during the registration itself. So it enables basically the marketing page to show uh, some forms or with some pre-fill information so you don't have to re-enter re the next time. And the event website, which use a cookie to enable uh, the sort of uh, track access to the, to the event site. Uh, I think it also re remembers your preferences. For example, if you have a website in different languages, you choose a language and then when you access it again, it will show the, the event site in the same language that you have selected before. So it's more about personalizing the experience itself. All right, so let me show you this in action. And uh, we have to do two things here. The first one is uh, we go to the event. We pick a new event here. And uh, this event you can see is in draft. So we don't have, uh, it's not published. We don't have a URL yet. So what we do basically is that we move it to live. Okay, so this means that the event is now live. We save it, and here we go. We see we got an event URL here. Uh, I, if you open the event URL, it will open um, in a browser with the full website. I'm not gonna do that from here because unfortunately there is something broken in my environment. Uh, I was playing around with the uh, event with the event uh, website and I couldn't manage to fix it in time for this session, but I have a recorded version of it. So I'll show you how the event website looks like. Just a little hiccup, but I have a workaround. So let's watch the way it looks like. So you see you have an event URL, you open the event and it will show you a portal, which is 
a responsive web portal that gives you access uh, to all the sessions, the registrations, and all the speakers. So you have a list of all the sessions that are available. Because you, you are authenticated also, you can add a session to your profile. So you can do e session level registration. You have a list of all the sponsors that support this event and a list of all the speakers as well. And you decide what kind of information you want to put, uh, uh, photo, names, uh, a link to Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, and so on. And obviously, uh, some graphics, uh, some text uh, uh, to promote the, the, the event itself uh, for this uh, uh, for this organization. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Thanks for watching. Any questions, any follow up, please uh, get in touch. I will be happy to assist. Bye.